the interest in what we got here with our daffodils in the orchard down at the bottom the little beach that's just down below when these salmon fishermen used to come up because the salmon f start, fishing start, season started in March <coughs> they always used to say we're going to go up to White Patch and White Patch at that time when they came up river they could see the daffodils in the orchard and that's how they knew they called the beach White Patch on those lines. Well the variety you've got down there which they probably would have seen is the fact you've got a lot of fire tail down yeah. there which are white, <laughs> yeah. albatross which is next to them um, then next again from that you've got a lot of emperor yeah. and then we did have on the top we haven't got so many now, you had the grand monarch that's right yeah. which were a very highly scented variety um, across from them you didn't have so many you had uh, quite a few emperors yeah. again at the time which was still in the um, in their rows um, it's only now further down that we've started putting in uh, some uh, newer bulbs, right. which some of them are historic varieties such as Pentuan. Um, but then as you go back up, a, a, a lot of the varieties you had, most of the other people would have had in the Tamar Valley at the same time yeah. as well, such as Emperor Victoria's, Empress, um, Lucifer's, Bernardino's. Um, we've got Red Beacon down there as well in the orchard, mm -hmm. which was um, originated from Cuyahay's Castle. The Williams has created that one. Um, and then you had Germans patch on the other side at one time, which uh, there was a lot of daffodils in there, which have mm -hmm. since, because the woodlands come off, it's killed them off. It's but, sporadic. Uh, they had a, a, a mixed variety in there of uh, daffodils, didn't they? More mm -hmm. or less the same as what we had. There's some primos up in there. Yeah. But, um, and which were all commercial varieties in their day. And um, we worked out that most of them were planted probably around about 1920, weren't yeah. they? Between 20 um, and 35, wasn't it? And as I said, they still come up in the rows that they were originally planted in. Um, and where we're sat now, again, which would have been seen from the river, we've got a lot of primos, a lot of the earlier ones, which are just over the path there, Forerunner, Barclays, yeah. Princeps, um, which, where do they start? Probably the end of February, isn't it? They start coming out, yeah, depending the on, the, ones, yeah. on the season. But if you have a, a warmish winter, they'll be out. Um, and a lot of double daffs, which are one of the eldest varieties um, of, well, the oldest mm. double that's yeah. known. Well, we, also, um, we also had the old uh, Incomparabilis, which was the old uh, egg and yolk, really. They come out much the same time as the double daff, don't they? Well, the Incomparabilis, they originally come from the Barry Conspicuous, yeah. which we got up in the orchard. And also another variety up there, you've got um, Lawrence Costa, yeah. which is quite late. Um, we've got quite a few double whites here, which again come out with some weekend, very, a very late variety. Yeah, th uh, for the term I grow local, for the actual survey um, of the historics we've got here, I, I, I think it's 67 varieties that we've got on this wow. piece of ground. Not all of them are a lot, some are only um, a few clumps. But, um, and obviously some of the newer ones that we've planted ourselves. But, uh, yeah, 67 that are recorded. We've got the Soldi Ore, haven't we? Which is mm -hmm. we, yeah. used to have a, we used to have quite a few paper whites, but they're few and far between there, yeah, not they? so many of them. And a lot of the Poeticus types, mm -hmm. the Pheasant Eye. Well, the Pheasant Eye is the original native mm -hmm. Poeticus anyway, which, you know, there's a, um, quite a few of them dotted mm -hmm. around, especially on this side of the garden. Yeah. Um, and again, all the Tazetta types such as Primo, um, Gloriosus, um, Soliel Dor. Um, it's quite, you know, quite a lot of the different divisions that we've got here. But um, yeah, it's as you know, a lot of them were at their time. You'll probably find also up the Tamar Valley, going up towards St Dominic, Calstock, places like that. Whatever was here, was there? the same people were growing at the same time. You know, it was, it was a, quite a big industry, wasn't it? You know. Well, you had over it, um, right opposite the uh, Who'd Have Thought It, uh, where the bungalows are now. There used to be a big shed there, and a chap called Rogers used to run it, and he was the one who supplied the whole of the valley with their boxes and uh, other bits and pieces they needed for uh, for selling the daffodils and, and all, well, also for the strawberries and everything, because he worked in with the the um, chip factory at uh, Colstock. Um, but he was the main one to come around and uh, deliver all the stuff to you. Because of the terrain of the land around here, um, we, we were able to keep our um, 
that's why the orchard is the same. All the all the fruit trees in the orchard and that were never touched because the ground wasn't suitable for uh, for really uh, growing on an intensive scale. It's only really the top of the field where some were thrown on the hedge, isn't it? And yeah. The, yeah. The bottom just inside just the gate. Inside the gate. On the Other than that, the, the steep areas um, weren't touched. Uh, likewise with the other um, growers around here over at Whittings, over at Hole's Hole. Um, they had a large orchard there until uh, late 50s when the government paid uh, people to have their orchards ripped up. My father, he, he didn't bother. He, he was quite happy to keep the, the orchards going because that was uh, something in the winter which made money. We used to sell apples locally and also at the time um, the uh, White Way Cider, which is a Devon Cider Company, and that, they would come around with a load of bags, drop them off, and then come back later with a lorry and pick all the, the apples up that you had you picked up for them. So you sold your apples then for cider. So, you know, it was a, a small sort of income coming in when nothing else was around, really, before the daffodils come in and when the strawberries and that had finished. I think it does kind of, it's, you know, here, Wig, it's called Wiggy Gardens because it was the little gardens and the little hedges create their own little microclimates mm. and that probably helped with especially if you've got an early daffodil if you want to try and get the early markets if they're sheltered and protected they're going to come early by the trees yeah yeah and so apple trees and the hedges would help them in that respect and obviously that was where the money was wasn't it if yeah. you get them get them to market early you were going to make a profit as soon as everyone's got them you're not going to make as much money or you're not going to make a profit at all we didn't have to use clotches or anything on the strawberries. Um, the father did try it once, but they weren't any earlier. Okay. Um, it didn't make a lot of difference to them. So uh, it obviously proves that, uh, you know, being sheltered, um, and we were as early as anybody with them under clotches. There was three main ones. There was uh, Cambridge Favourite, Cambridge Vigor, Royal Sovereign, Red gauntlet, or four varieties of red gauntlet. That was the, the four ones that we used to uh, used to grow. I think uh, probably uh, Cambridge favourite was, I think, was the first used to come, and then it, then the last the last one was the uh, was the red gauntlet. That was a little later, but of course then they started to bring out a lot of new varieties, which we did try a few here. But by that time, my father was. Um, you know, a lot older and, and I was working so he didn't uh, and, we, and of course we'd lost the, the means of getting them to market anymore to London and, and what have you. Of the daffodils then, the earliest we've got here is Forerunner, yeah. um, which comes out with Princep um, and probably Barclay. Yeah. They were the, uh, probably the end of February they start oh. coming out. Um, Forerunner's uh, quite a strong yellow division one daffodil, good traveller. Um, Barclay, you can always tell Barclay because again it's a tall, again a division one but it's got a twisted petal. Right. Um, which sets it apart. Um, the princeps are smaller. Or you could almost mix it up a little bit with Empress because it's got a, a paler petal to it but it's a, uh, again a division one but they would probably be out at the end of February depending on if you had a, a mild winter. Yeah. If you, have a, if you have cold snaps, then it keeps the bulbs back a bit yeah. on all the varieties, not just the early ones, you know. But that's our earliest. We haven't got any really, really early ones, have we? Um, Gary's sleep, they used to send a, a van down around and used to pick up, the, or a lorry, used to pick up the boxes and then uh, take them to the station. And then uh, they'd be put on the train, well, be packed into the, car, into the um, box vans and as far as I, I recall, the, the, uh, the train going up to London, the, the Express, they used to put a couple of box vans on the back of it. And that was their means of getting the, the flowers uh, well, and the fruit to the, to the market. They used to be in the London then, I think. Well, it used to be on sale in Covered Garden. They used to say that past four in the morning. Well, after the trains, that, that, that just killed the market. I mean, you were only able to take it. They, they did try running a lorry to London, but it, it wasn't successful. Um, and most people then, I think, really just sold a bit local stuff some had um, markets in Plymouth market and places like that but it basically it took the heart out of the uh, out of the market garden industry in the Tamer Valley and then uh, as I say you know I mean you always had coal stock with early tomatoes and things like that um, but because they had to use heating to get them up it got expensive you had cheap 
imports coming in from Spain, from the Netherlands, and everywhere like that. Um, and really, the people down here just couldn't compete. I think there's a, a revival of people that want to know where things yeah. come from, whether it's flowers, fruit, veg, and um, you know, there's there's the opportunities. I think now, and it'd be quite nice to think that um, when come back. that people could actually start up, especially in the Tamar Valley, growing again. Because things do go full circle, don't they? Oh yeah, definitely. Varieties that are. Um, now coming on the market in 50 years time they're going to be known as historics yeah so you know it, it's it's something that continues and it, it'd be nice to think that you know we are in an area that is outstanding it is a beautiful area but at the same time people have got to make a living and make some money or what have you and, keep, and again it's like you've got charlie here and his, his brother jack which in the future it'll be um up to them and you'd like to think that it would it would keep going as an area for growing or producing